Richard Brand, my freshman roommate at Oklahoma Baptist University. He was playing at Chopin's Polonaise on the Steinway of the church, social in Midwest City, during the Korean War. As his bony shoulders pumped, his long fingers flew fiercely along the length of the keyboard with a power I wouldn't have believed possible for someone so unathletic looking. It was the first time I'd ever liked anything classical. The last time I saw Richard, he drove me home in his 40 Plymouth Coupe. I had just returned from Moody Bible Institute in Chicago and looked forward to telling him of the white buck college quarterbacks and high heel blob beauty queens I had seen testify at Youth for Christ rallies about the unspeakable joy they discovered the moment they bowed their heads, closed their eyes, and asked Jesus to come in their hearts and take total control. I knew Richard was madly for Adley when most of us liked Ike, and that he might have believed evolution was true, but I still wasn't ready for what he told me. He could no longer prostrate himself before the Bible Belt's despotic deity. He had found a peace doubting he never had believing. He said I should read J.B. Phillips' book, Your God is Too Small. Before I got out of his car, he placed a hand on my left wrist and asked in an anguished voice, Please, don't pray for me. I'd like to visit that North Carolina Oak Grove where Richard shot himself, kneel before a mound of brown and yellow leaves piled within a circle of ash white stones and let him know I never prayed for him. I read J.B. Phillips' book, also Eric Fromm's Escape from Freedom. I've yet to hear anyone play a better apologies. Uh,